So let's assume for a second, a group of robbers or intruders are attempting to break into your home or place of business. These intruders are highly trained and employ a set of specific tactics each time they break in to steal something. Wouldn't you want to know their strategies if it meant that you could prevent them from entering and causing harm? That is what this video will cover. I'll tell you five of the most common ways hackers can steal something from you. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Tech with AB. My name is Avenizer Gerberhiwood and I am a cybersecurity specialist at IBM. I'd like to begin this video by thanking everyone who has supported this channel and has provided me feedback. My goal is to make more high quality videos that are also simple to understand. So without any further ado, let's dive into five of the most common types of cybersecurity attacks. We're gonna start by listing them and we're gonna get more into detail about what these attacks are. And then if you want to go further and learn how you can protect yourself, I'll attach a blog that I wrote. So please make sure that you check it out if you want to protect yourself. So the first one is malware. Second is phishing. Third, we're going to talk about password attacks. And then we're going to talk about denial of service or DOS attacks. Then we're going to close it out with man in the middle attacks. All right, so let's get started with malware. So at some point, we've all had a time where we might have said, hey, I think I got a virus on my phone or my computer. And you might be right, viruses are one form of malware. Malware refers to a variety of malicious software including viruses and ransomware. Once malware is installed onto your computer, it can cause damage by taking control of it, monitoring your actions, and it can also monitor your keystrokes and it sends that data, the confidential data, silently from your computer or network to the attacker's home base. Attackers will use a variety of methods to infiltrate your computer, but at some point, the user will be required to perform an action in order for the malware to be installed. This can include clicking a link to download a file or opening an attachment that appears to be harmless. And these files can be a Word document or a PDF attachment, but they might contain a malware installer inside of them. Now, let's get to phishing. This is one of the most interesting attacks. And I say that because it requires a human error for it to work. So let's say, for example, um, of course you wouldn't click on a link unless it's for a compelling reason. And attackers know this too. So when an attacker wants to install malware, they use phishing, pretending to be someone they are not. Since they rely on human curiosity and impulses, phishing attacks can be difficult to stop. In a phishing attack, an attacker may send you an email that appears to be from someone you trust, like your boss, or a company that you do business with. The email may seem very legitimate and it will have some type of urgency to it. For example, we can see the most recent Uber hack, where the attacker or the hacker sent an email to an Uber employee pretending to be from the IT department asking him for his credentials. And what did the employee do? He sent the hacker his credentials. And from there, the hacker was able to exploit the company and cause a lot of damage. This is just one example of a phishing attack. Next, let's get to password attacks. Users these days have so many login credentials and it's so tempting to reuse these passwords. Because let's face it, it makes life easier. The attackers rely on us reusing passwords because when there's a data breach, passwords get leaked and they are sold, sold on the black market. Once they get a collection of these credentials, they know that if they use the same credentials on other websites, there's a chance that they'll be able to log in. And this gives them easy access to your email, bank account, and all the important sites that you log into. The next type of attack we're gonna talk about is called DOS, also known as denial of service attack. The easiest way to explain this attack is through an analogy. So let's say you just attended a big sports event or a concert. And you know how crowded those one-way traffic can be. And as a result, it gets so backed up that pretty much no one can leave. That is exactly what happens with a denial of service attack. If you flood a website with more traffic than it was built to handle, you'll overload the website server and it will be impossible for the website to serve up its content to visitors who are trying to access it. So let's say a small business selling its goods online uh, happens to get overloaded by a DOS attack and this would cause them to shut down the business and it will have huge financial implications 
for that small business. And in some instances, these DOS attacks or denial of service attacks are performed by many computers at the same time. This scenario or attack is known as distributed denial of service attacks, also known as DDoS. This type of attack can be even more difficult to overcome due to the attacker appearing from many different IP addresses around the world simultaneously, making determining the source of the attack even more difficult for the network administrators. And finally, we're going to talk about man-in-the-middle attacks. There are common types of cybersecurity attacks that allows attackers to listen in or spy on a communication between two targets. This attack takes place between two communicating computers, allowing the attacker to listen in to a conversation that they are having. So let's say you and your friend are having a confidential confirmation, thinking that it's just between the two of you. But there is someone in the middle listening to this confirmation and the conversation is being hijacked. This is what man in the middle attack is. So to summarize, today we talked about five of the most common types of cybersecurity attacks. We talked about malware, phishing, password attacks, denial of service attacks, and man in the middle attacks. So like I said, if you want to learn on how you can protect yourself from these attacks, I will attach a blog under this video and make sure to check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video and like always, I would love to hear your comments and feedback so we can make this channel even better than what it is right now. Thank you so much and stay cyber safe.